You go to your electric car and it's out of juice. You have two choices, wait a while at home for it to charge or head to the nearest charging station. Either way, you're looking at a wait much longer than filling up at a gas station. But what if I told you that in the near future you could charge your EV just as fast as pumping gas? That's why BYD, the Chinese EV giant, is claiming with its new 1000 volt fast charging platform, a system that could add 249 miles of range in just five minutes. If it works as promised, this could change how we think about EVs entirely. At the same time, BYD is expanding into global markets, considering Germany for its third European factory, while also exploring ways to overcome barriers to entering North America. With EV mandates loosening in the US and Canada, could BYD be positioning itself to fill the gaps left by Western automakers slowing down their EV plans? To get a better understanding of what BYD is doing and what it means for the industry, I spoke with Hans Grimel, who has been covering the company's expansion closely. What are the biggest factors preventing their entry into the US and Canada? Well, I think right now what you see with BYD's entry into North America is a couple things. One is the tariffs. There are big tariffs against cars coming in from China, especially Chinese-based ones. Uh, they don't qualify necessarily for the incentives that were currently applied to US-sourced batteries and US-sourced EVs. So they face a, ch a price challenge on that level as well. And then secondly, or thirdly, there's a perception problem with Chinese vehicles that there's a, the American consumer is not really accustomed to Chinese vehicles, doesn't quite trust the, the brands, doesn't know the brands, doesn't trust the quality, and that's a factor as well. Now that said, I think BYD still does have their, their long-term objective is to eventually crack the US market, North America, and they were considering at one point starting with a uh, plant in Mexico to build a pickup truck. We've seen BYD expand in Europe as well, now considering a factory in Germany. Does that also fit into their uh, long-term strategy? Right, uh, BYD is kind of on a global uh, expansion binge right now. It's really branching out all over the place, including some markets that might be surprising, including uh, South Korea and Japan, especially Japan. It's very difficult for foreign brands to gain a foothold here and to expand, but uh, BYD is confident in its product and is trying to uh, sell the cars here. So that is that explains a little bit about their ambition. In Europe, they have already have two plants in Europe, I believe one in Eastern Europe and one in Hungary, or sorry, one in Hungary and I think one in Turkey, I believe. And uh, now they're thinking about building a third in Germany. That would really establish themselves as a European player where their sales are taking off largely due to their good cars and their affordable price points. They also have recently revealed a thousand volt EV platform with ultra fast charging. How does that compare to their competitors like Tesla? And what other legacy automakers are offering? Well, BYD is known for being kind of a pushing the boundaries of what we normally accept as, as a traditional technology in the automotive world. Uh, they really push the boundaries with batteries. They push the boundaries with price. They push the boundaries with with production engineering, all these things are kind of new approaches that think outside the box and have caused a lot of headaches for global manufacturers and their competitors worldwide. Among them is this new development of a uh, 1000 volt EV architecture or vehicle architecture for their EVs. And that is really takes it up to the next level. Current standards are basically 400 volts or in some cases 800 volts. That's kind of becoming the new norm, but a uh, thousand volts volts takes it up even higher and that allows them to supercharge at, at faster rates basically as something that's akin to the same speed that you would get from charging or filling up with a gasoline uh, at a gasoline stand, a regular uh, regular gas car. So this is one of the holy grails of the EVs because the, uh, of course, some of the, the obstacles to EV adoption have been the price point because they're expensive, the charging network because there aren't a lot of charging networks, and then of course the charging time because it took a long time to recharge these batteries. But with this new 1000 volt architecture, they can charge up to basically uh, 250 miles, give you f 250 miles of range in about five minutes of charging. And that is something that's basically akin to filling up at a gas pump with your gasoline car. With the EV mandates loosening in North America, 
Do you think BYD sees an opportunity to fill the gaps left by Western automakers slowing down their EV plants? Well, I think that they would love to get into the U.S. market if they could, but I don't know that as the EV demand slows, that this opens up an opportunity for BYD to step in, largely because of the barriers that they already face. That is the lack of acceptance, the lack of incentives, and of course, these new tariff barriers that are coming in that will only make it more pricey for them to find a good price point in the United States. That said, they're, they're already more affordable, perhaps. So if uh, there is a f- level playing field where they're not hobbled by things like the tariffs, they could find a good price point and acceptance in the U.S. market. And especially if they were to adopt a kind of build locally approach, that would probably be their best way of gaining a foothold in, in North America to sell cars into the United States. To quickly sum up what we just talked about, tariffs and incentives are a major hurdle. Without U.S. EV credits, BYD's pricing advantage is weakened. Consumer trust is another challenge. BYD may dominate China, but Western buyers aren't as familiar with the brand. BYD's global expansion is moving fast. They're pushing into Japan, South Korea, and now considering Germany for another factory. Their new 1000 volt fast charging platform is a potential game changer. It could solve one of the biggest barriers to EV adoption. Even with EV mandates easing in North America, BYD still faces roadblocks. Entering the US or Canada will likely require a local factory. While BYD is expanding, whether they can break into North America market remains an open question. Going back a few months, Ford CEO Jim Farley made an interesting revelation, stating that he had been driving a Xiaomi SU7, a Chinese electric sedan, for six months after importing it from Shanghai, saying it was fantastic and that he didn't want to give it up. Farley shared this on the Everything Electric Show podcast, admitting that Chinese automakers are a real threat to legacy brands like Ford. He pointed out that they're moving faster, producing high-quality EVs at lower costs, and could reshape the industry just like Japanese automakers did decades ago. The electric part of the China market compared to the US or Western Europe is like 20 times bigger. But the yeah. Xiaomi car, <laughs> which was big, which which now exists and is on the which road, which now exists, tens of thousands, and yeah. it's fantastic. They sell right. 10,000, 20,000 a month. They're sold out for six months. Wow! You know that is an industry juggernaut and yes. a consumer brand that is much stronger than car companies. I, I don't like talking about the competition so much, but I, I drive the no. Xiaomi. We we flew one from Shanghai to Chicago, and I've been driving it for six months now, and I don't want to give it up. Right. Wow. That's that's an extraordinary thing to say, isn't it? Yes. As the, you know, I mean, I can I totally understand it. I mean, I think it's I think it's great that you do in that sense that you're experiencing what you know. You're not saying because I I do remember seeing a load of BYD cars at the Geneva Motor Show, and I think about 2009, and I thought these are not good. You know, they're not yep. well made. They looked yep. weird. They just yep. didn't look right. But my goodness, now you look at what they're doing. Anyway, we don't have to talk about. No, I'm anymore. I'm fine but too it's... because I I think this was all something that I processed. We processed as a team, and yeah. we were not naive to. And yes. we did look the other way. And why is that the case? Well, I worked at Toyota for 25 years. When I joined Toyota in the U.S., there was 500 people at the company. Wow. Um, and we we were like a marginal brand. No one even know knew of us, as you yeah. said, outside of. I worked there for 20 years. Right. My family was not happy. They wouldn't talk to me here in Detroit because they were wow. ashamed that I worked there. And there was a huge social cost yeah. in the Midwest of the U.S. for the success of Toyota. So many yeah. jobs were lost, including many people in my family. And, right. you know, I, I can't unlearn that as a young man. I can't yeah. unlearn the, you know, the fact that the Detroit 3 really never had a plan. Yeah. Uh, and we're not going to miss this one. Bill Ford and right. I shook hands or embraced whatever metaphor you want to use. And we said, we said, this one, we're going to have to get it right from scratch. While the Xiaomi SU7 isn't a BYD model, Farley's experience reinforces the idea that Chinese EVs are more competitive than many might expect. And if industry leaders are paying attention, how long before American consumers do too? Let us know what you think in the comments. And for all updates and insights, visit autodews.com.